I use and review exclusively Micro Four Thirds related equipment. For me, it is the best synthesis of size and image quality ever. Not only that, but in its seventh year of existence, it is graced with a lens and accessory ecosystem that is second only to Nikon and Canon in its scope. So why am I reviewing what is an upmarket, fixed lens, compact camera? Well, the LX100 is a sort of ornery Micro Four Thirds camera, because it does use an MFT sensor, the same one as Panasonic's GX7 in fact. I'm reviewing it from the point of view of a photographer who owns, say, a Panasonic GH4 or Olympus EM1, or other top-line MFT, and is looking for a second camera, something to take everywhere always, with most of the quality, but smaller than the flagship cameras, while importantly retaining some of their flexibility. A compact looters out on image quality and versatility. Something like a Panasonic GM5 fills the bill, but you'd need two slowish zooms for portability. So, for our second camera we want great image quality, compact size and a fast zoom lens. It'd be nice to have state-of-the-art focusing. Nice if it worked with fast sequence shooting too. And a usable eye level finder. And a bit of macro thrown in. Oh yes, and 4K video, how about that? Enter the LX100. It is at heart an MFT camera with a non-interchangeable lens. Because the lens is fixed, the designer can juggle the optical performance, maximum aperture, zoom range and size without any compromise. That's how the LX100 zoom manages to have a 10.9 to 34mm, 12 to 75mm equivalent f1.7 to f2.8 zoom on board. It actually doesn't use all of the MFT sensor area, giving a 2.2 times crop rather than the normal 2 times MFT crop, which means that 10.9 rather than 12mm gives a 24mm angle of view, which helps to keep the lens smaller and eases the job of making it faster. As a byproduct, it means that unlike most Micro Four Thirds cameras, the angle of view does not change noticeably as you alter the aspect ratio. On a GX8, for example, a 25mm standard lens would be the equivalent of 50mm at aspect ratio 4 to 3, but 55mm at 16 to 9. The disadvantage is that you record a maximum 12 instead of 16 megapixels. So, let's take a look. The LX100 is a little smaller than a GX7, it's made of metal and feels as weighty and solid as you'd hope a camera of this price would. On first picking it up I felt a surge of nostalgia. It reminded me of the look and feel of the old Canon Sure Shot with F19 lens that every press photographer used to have. I actually felt I should be loading film into it. The first thing you notice is no mode dial. Instead there is a shutter speed dial and around the lens there is an aperture dial. To the right is an exposure compensation dial and at the rear of the lens is a click ring for setting the aspect ratio. The Leica logoed lens at rest is a handsome beast, squat with a big serious looking front element, less handsome as it wheezes into action. There's a ring around the lens behind the aperture ring which serves as a zoom control by default, changing to focusing if you set the focus mode to manual though it can be repurposed to set ISO or white balance if you want. The focus switch has settings for autofocus, close focus and manual, but none for continuous autofocus, which you must set in the menu. Rear body controls follow the usual pattern of a four-way rotating or cursor switch setting dial, the disp button for cycling through the monitor screens, AFAE lock and the video recording button. There are also dedicated buttons for intelligent auto and filters. I wouldn't have thought that filters merited dedicated button space on limited real estate, but that is one of the ways in which the LX100's compact camera bloodline shows, I guess. There's no built-in flash, but a tiny one is supplied to fit the hot shoe. It may not be much of a flash, but it's a gift from Lady Bountiful herself when you consider that the GX8, the much more expensive top-line Panasonic, doesn't come with so much as a gift voucher for a pound shop candle. The biggest omission on this camera is to me inexplicable, it doesn't have a touch screen. Not only that, but the screen is fixed, so no overhead or ultra low angle shots unless you lay on the ground. And no selfies of course, so that's Kim Kardashian f*** then. Video is actuated only by the rear mounted rec button. So, how is the LX100 in use? First of all, while it doesn't have a mode dial, it does have auto settings on both the aperture and shutter speed dials, 
so setting auto on the shutter speed dial is aperture priority and auto on the aperture ring is shutter priority. Set them both to auto and you have program mode. Set the shutter speed and aperture manually and you can set ISO to auto. So for a sports shot you can set a thousandth of an f4 and the ISO speed will alter to keep the exposure correct. It's all very flexible and with marked physical controls for the major functions easy to see what's going on. The aperture ring has lugs on it, perfectly placed to be nudged off setting if you use the control ring. I found it best to disable the control ring and zoom the lens from the shutter buttons around. The control ring doesn't do anything unique, so you don't lose anything, and even disabled it acts as a focusing ring when you are set to manual focus. The LX100 feels good in the hands, not too big, not too small. It's not really pocketable, but it's no burden at all in a shoulder bag or a bike saddle bag, say. Anyone familiar with film cameras will feel right at home with the shutter and aperture rings. I'm not sure what benefit they are because the now conventional mode dial on top with front and rear dials offers more flexibility but they do reinforce the rangefinder retro style looks. Considering that the lens has to unfold, from switch on to take picture mode is quite quick. I'm not sure why it needs a physical aspect ratio switch. Video aspect is automatically set anyway. Does anyone really switch between aspect ratios so frequently they want immediate access? Either way, it doesn't do any harm. Remarkably, the LX100 has 4K video as well as the full high definition 1080 and HD 720 modes. And that 4K video spills over into Panasonic's now familiar 4K photo mode. about performance. Well in this it is definitely not a compact camera. It performs as you would expect any recent Micro Four Thirds camera to do. I had the smaller sensor Panasonic LX5 once and what a beautiful camera that was. Unfortunately while you could get good quality from it you had to work at it, keep the ISO down and so on. Ultimately for shooting my stock stuff it was simply easier and more enjoyable to use a bigger sensor camera. If Micro Four Thirds image quality meets your needs, the LX100 won't disappoint. Many full frame professional digital cameras operate at 12 megapixels after all. With the darker days in November in the UK, I've found myself using the zoom wide open a lot of the time and I've not found it wanting at all. A 12mm prime with an aperture of f1.7 would be pretty remarkable. On a zoom ranging to 75mm equivalent at f2.8, it's phenomenal. If you want corner to corner sharpness, you need to stop it down a stop or two, but in my general day to day use, wide open will do nicely. Focusing performance is what you would expect from a recent Micro Four Thirds camera. It uses the depth from defocus technology to supplement the standard contrast focus detection. Basically, it has a database of what out of focus areas look like behind and in front of the subject to judge which way it needs to adjust to avoid racking in and out too much for the contrast data. On autofocus single, it is probably as fast as any camera made today of whatever type. On autofocus continuous, it is as good as the Panasonic GX7 if not the GX8. You can shoot a sequence with continuous autofocus up to about 6 frames a second, without it at up to 40 frames per second. 4K photo will continuously focus at 30 frames per second, but with a file size limited to 8 megapixels. Having said all that, with a maximum focal length of 75mm you are not going to be covering much in the way of sport or wildlife image sequences. You can set the aspect ratio to any setting while recording 4K by the way. Close focus is not macro, that is one to one, but it's a few centimetres for the lens at the wide end and for flowers and those casual shots just to see what it looks like, plenty close enough. The lens stabilisation is very effective, worth around three stops according to my shaky old mitts. You can't fit a lens hood and the lens will flare so avoid bright light sources near the edge of the frame. I shoot one handed in those circumstances and shield the light source with my other hand. I saw no particular signs of the purple fringing or distortion which is inevitable with a zoom like this so it must be well corrected in the camera. The viewfinder is the same size as the GX7s, that is smallish 
but perfectly good and detailed enough for manual focusing with a focus magnification and or peaking engaged. The viewfinder colours are a bit odd, seeming to me garish in parts and bloodless in others. I did make adjustments but didn't find an improvement. While it's fine for framing and detail, I wouldn't use it to judge the image's final appearance, for which the monitor is more accurate. So, to sum up, what to make of the LX100? For someone coming to it from a compact camera, it'll knock their socks off and take them to a new level of photography with the penalty of size, price and complexity. I don't really see this as a grown-up compact, though. It's not a bridge camera rival either, which sacrifices image quality to the lure of massive zoom ranges. It's less flashy, a more serious tool. To me, it passes the duck test, or rather the MFT test. If it looks like an MFT, handles like an MFT, and has an MFT sensor, it's probably an MFT, and this is. There's a big sacrifice in that you are stuck with the restricted zoom range lens it comes with, but it's a good and fast lens. And what a luxury to know you will never see those dark shadows on a clear blue sky. No dirt can get on this sensor. It's a camera with character, and with its rangefinder style and those dedicated shutter and aperture settings, it's fun to use, and it grows on you. It certainly did on me. However, a micro four thirds photographer is used to some versatility. A fixed zoom with a touch and swivel screen is one thing. Interchangeable lenses without the touch and swivel screen, another. The retro character is taken too far for me though, with a fixed zoom and emitting a touch sensitive or swivelling screen. It feels hobbled. As an only camera for a not too ambitious photographer, someone who wants quality pictures but doesn't want the bother of choosing or using interchangeable lenses, the LX100 is perfect. It has the performance and facilities of a good micro four thirds camera, including 4K video, time lapse and depth from defocus technology, and a lens probably better than you'd hope for. As a second camera for a micro four thirds user, you'll miss the interchangeable lenses and the monitor swivel and touch facilities of your main camera, and you'll miss pictures as a result. Ultimately, you'll be frustrated. You are used to compact size and low weight, but also to DSLR facilities. The funny thing is, I'd almost certainly buy an LX100 if they made an even less flexible version. Just scrap the high speed zoom and fit a purpose designed very high speed fixed prime instead. The LX112 maybe. Same size metal body, same dedicated shutter and lens aperture controls, even the same fixed non-touch screen, but with a fixed 17 or 20mm f1.2 lens. I'd buy one of those. Thanks for watching.